what is karma and what is destiny and what is the relationship between karma and destiny which of these determine how my life is going to be you will get the answers to all these questions in this episode hi this is vasudevan author of follow your heart your brain is stupid this channel is dedicated to those who wish to take charge and to create for themselves a life of freedom joy and happiness Let's jump right into the chat show with Arun Prabhu. Hi Arun, welcome to my chat show once again. It's a pleasure having you here and it's an honor for me to have you on my chat show. A pleasure is mine. I really enjoy it here. Thank you so much. Uh, viewers, we have with us uh, an amazing personality, Arun Prabhu. He's being featured in my chat show the, for the second time. Arun Prabhu is a mechanical engineer and a management graduate by education. a very successful IT entrepreneur by profession and an author coach a theater artist and a movie maker by passion he calls himself a nomad in search of the answers to existence is very interesting uh, way to describe himself yeah. a couple of uh, weeks ago i had featured arun in in an episode where he had talked about how our life is like a rubik's cube and it's got multiple dimensions that we need to focus on simultaneously if for us to achieve fulfillment it is a extremely interesting episode and i encourage you to go and watch that episode i will be sharing the link of that episode at the end of this episode okay do watch it we had some discussions and then we thought we should have uh, there were a lot of things which are in common in our thoughts etc So we thought let's do a series of um, uh, episodes covering uh, various topics which will be of interest to most of us. So the first episode in in this series we're going to talk about karma versus destiny. We all talk about karma, we talk about destiny, etc. What exactly is karma? What is uh, destiny? And what is the relationship between karma and destiny? And that's what we're going to be covering here, Arun. I, this is something which uh, has been intriguing me because we have seen people who are very successful they seem very happy everything is going good in their life however they are not doing the right things you know they are not uh, things are not not the legal way uh, they are you know cheating people but like their life is perfectly okay they are enjoying life at the same time there are people who are very good they are uh, they are doing service to people Uh, they are religious uh, and their values and their integrity are so good yet they do suffer there is a lot of suffering they 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 are experiencing so always i used to think why why what is this why is this person who's not a good person uh, per se and and he's enjoying life and this other guy is uh, so good at heart he's doing service to people yet so much of suffering is going through so i'm sure uh, viewers you would have also experienced this so i thought let's hack uh, arun's brain to find out why is this happening why what is this destiny what is this karma etc so arun over to you yeah thank you so much and this is a very interesting question and it always intrigued me uh, you know since long uh but life taught me uh, life experiences taught me and you know as you said that i am a nomad in search of answers so kept on racking my thing and this is from my experience and this is from the experiences of others who have written good books on on these so that is where i the clarity came you know and that's why i want to share it with all of you uh, that it's always there is a question that if there is karma then what's the point of destiny that why we say that it's destined and if it is destined then what if i don't work if i don't do karma fine so actually what we can do is we can understand it in you know there are three major parts to it number one we need to understand first thing is why have we incarnated as human beings in this universe i'll say in this universe because earth is a part of the universe we don't know how many of these earth like object earth like planets are there but we talk about when we talk about mankind we talk about earth and earth is part of a universe and we are part of the universe and not the earth or the solar system 
so why did we why did we incarnate here is because we have there is a soul contract we will not go deeper into it just for you know a layman's look we always have a soul contract where we say ki okay we came here to experience certain experiences which were left unexperienced in our past life now i won't be talking about past life here i won't be talking just to give you the you know context so for example if if today i have certain desires and i die immediately so what happens is i have to experience that i have to take rebirth to experience that you know unfinished desires so first of all which means we have come here for to experience certain things which we would like now how does this universe uh, you know work the universe works in a very balanced state aap agar dekhenge if you see the earth is moving around the sun since ages and it's balanced no disturbance every everything is so well planned and they are and it's going on since ages i don't know since eons fine right. so universe always wants to be in a balance which means if you disturb anything there will be a repercussion not to get it disturbed that's what balance is na for example if i throw the ball up the ball has to come down the ball won't go you know keep on going up so it will come down to that very stage where it will say okay rest in peace that's inertia so what's the point which i want to tell you is the point which i want to tell you is that every cause has an effect and every effect has a cause there cannot be any effect without a cause and there can never be any cause which has no effect fine anything which is right okay so similarly whatever we do and 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 uh, we human beings are the only species on this planet earth who can actually have the conscious mind to create things see a a, a, a dog see they live with us they are our family members but a dog cannot go beyond certain limits of creating things you know but we human beings are empowered to create things which means we human beings are empowered to do things so when we do things certain things there will always be an effect so that means what everything which you do and and mind you when we say about karma first of all we need to understand what is actual karma many a times when we say karma means the action which i take no the karma is not the action which you take the karma is the thought behind the action which you take for example i may not be doing anything but i might be thinking and what i am thinking is the thought waves which cannot be manipulated see i can manipulate my action i can tell to someone oh i love you so much you know i love you so much but at the back of my mind i say okay once i get through you know then i'll tell you the right. challenge here is people see my action people right. are seeing my action people are not seeing my thought universe is reverse the universe doesn't see my action because there is there, the universe doesn't have eyes so mm -hmm. that's why we say eyes be fool us universe has no eyes so universe says i don't know what you are doing but i can sense what you are thinking those vibrations so your thought yeah vibration so your thought vibrations i can guess because i am vibration the whole universe is a vibration right. so you cannot manipulate the vibrations and that's why i know what is your intent so when we say karma we need to understand karma is not the action which we do the karma is the intent for example you may not do certain actions because the government doesn't allow you right, right? now what happens when there is a riot the same people become what rakshasas mm. no because they always wear rakshasas there's not all people don't become rakshasas but those people who had that intent now because there is no one to punish them it's a mob you can loot anything you can do anything they come and do it so which means what thought process so first of all we need to understand karma starts from your thought process first and then when this thought process becomes an obsession you know like if i am obsessed with luxuries obsessed with luxuries obsessed with luxuries one day i will take an action and maybe i'll steal something because i don't i didn't get it the right so the karma see what the physical karma is actually the 
end product of the thought process so when we become judgmental about what he is doing and what he is getting there is one catch the first catch is you don't know what he is thinking hmm that's number 1 theek hai number 2 you also don't know we also don't know what is the soul contract you came with fine okay. so which means if i came with the soul contract that i have to get birth in a rich family i will get birth in my rich family so when you so say what you are saying is i am born in a rich family when you say soul contract what if you can elaborate? i'll come to that soul contract okay okay yeah soul soul contract i'll do that. it's again karma only. it's again karma only. okay theek hai so my second thing is what i get today is the accumulation of what i did yesterday okay what i am doing today i will get, the accumulation i'll get tomorrow or day after but the challenge here is we have split the timeline and become judgmental you are judging me on say what's date today today is uh, say 23rd may 2024 you are judging me on this day 5 pm what i am doing but what i am doing or what i have done is accumulation of all the years which i have lived and all the years i will be living so all the uh, years which i have lived is my karma which i have done i cannot you know undo that okay. that has been done so if i did all the good things in the past it will come back today okay. now when it comes back today and i become rich do i become arrogant if i become arrogant which means i am creating my karma for the next couple of years or maybe next jan when i say next jan that's the soul contract for example if today i do something bad and i die the vibrations have not died the vibrations are still there mm-hmm. because universe may no vibrations are you know totally nullified unless until it is either absorbed or absorbed so that vibration will always be there till it is not nullified so i have to come back to nullify that vibration which i said okay did i confuse slightly see <laughs> so coming back to the point slightly yes i'll tell you what coming back to the point let's make it very simple what what you see today mm. when you say that they, the, these people are enjoying they are not enjoying what they are today doing today they are enjoying what they did in the past okay. couple of years past birth or past life okay. fine now what we say here is that is called delayed gratification the universe works on the principle of delayed gratification now what's delayed gratification and why it is important suppose you today god comes to you and says vasu don't worry from today onwards you will get your results within seconds so you do a podcast and within seconds it will be a million hits how would you like it i'll enjoy i'll be very happy yeah. <laughs> you'll enjoy you'll enjoy you'll enjoy yes fine and whatever you do whatever you do you will get those you you go out and give some you know help someone in the uh, someone uh, with you know money or whatever it is and by the evening you will get a result oh because of this deed you get this 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 mm. so everything is s- immediate how would you like it and i think we all look forward to that <laughs> in life yeah but yeah. there is but there is a catch but there is a catch by mistake yeah. if you smoke one cigarette you will die of cancer immediately right yes. is that okay with you no by mistake by mistake if you cross the red light you will be crashed to death by a truck no escapes no delayed gratifications no forgiveness because delayed gratification and instant gratification are not biased so if everything is immediate then everything will be immediate right the moment you drink sip wine the moment you sip alcohol your liver is going to go out and cirrhosis ho jayega cancer and you and by the night you die is that okay with you not at all so what universe says universe says whether it is good or bad i'll give you time to think ponder be sure yeah persistence so when you persist 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 and be consistent then i will say okay now you what you do you get the result so for example if i miss the red light by mistake universe says no worries 
you won't be crushed to death. Next time, please don't do it. And I say, oh, next time I won't do it. Fine. Everything nullified. But if I keep on crossing red lights, I'm challenging the universe. Universe, oh, what will you do? One day I'm going to be crushed. But are you there to watch me through my life journey? You will watch only that incident when I cross the red light and no one challenged me. Mm. Period. And you became judgmental. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm saying you. We become judgmental. Then yes. we say, oh my God, he's crossing the red light and no, and nobody's finding that person. Mm. So the timeline, we have to understand that there is no timeline in any human, you know, and we cannot track. We are not twins. We can we are not twins that we are we are even twins don't live together. So you can only track someone when you track his whole life. Mm. So go go to 25 years and then say, okay, 25 years ago he did this thing, today he's in jail. Mm. Could I could I could yeah, I clarify yeah. what delayed yeah, gratification yeah. is? And right. delayed gratification is made because if delayed gratification is not there, the universe will collapse. Because the moment I, I the moment I have a thought that, oh, I will do this thing, it will happen. Immediately it will happen. And sometimes, you know, we get so depressed, oh, I think so, yaar, I better die. And mm. the next moment I'll die. Because no, no, there's instant gratification. You think and you, it's done. So that is why God said, the universe said, or whatever you say, the I, I always term it as universe, that universe challenges you to check. Do you really want it? Are you sure? Like KBC, we say, lock it yeah. dekho, Please, are you sure? You still have time. But once you have locked it, then... What you have done is, you have defined your destiny. Okay. The moment you gave a wrong answer, the destiny is defined. So destiny is basically the repercussion of your karma. Okay. Fine. And when you are getting, so that means what? Yes, whatever you do, the destiny will come to you. It has to. If you give the wrong answer, you don't get the second choice. If you give the right answer, you get the price. Fine. Right. Now the question here is, many a times people say that, okay, if it's all karma, then what is destiny? Right. And if it is destiny, what is karma? The, that is where, you know, uh, I'll give you another analogy. Like, for example, if you uh, catch a train from um, Delhi to Mumbai, Rajdhani, you say. Fine. Right. You have taken, see what karma you have taken, what karma you have, your karma you have done is you you've checked the train timings, you have booked the ticket, you have packed for the journey, you have reached the station on time, you boarded the, uh, you know, your coach and you sat down. This is all the karma which you have done. Okay. Now, what is destiny? If you don't do anything else, by 8.30 tomorrow morning, you will reach Mumbai. Can right. anyone change this destiny? Can anyone change his destiny? No. You can. Because if you realize, I'm sorry, I boarded the wrong train. I don't oh. want to go to Mumbai. There are five stations where you can get down. Okay. Okay. Got it. In between. And that's Rajdhani. If you, if you take another train, there are maybe 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20 stations. Which you can get down, take another flight or a train or whatever means to go to Calcutta. If you thought, oh, I'm, I'm in the wrong train, I should have gone to Calcutta, you will have five choices to change your, and nobody is going to come and judge you. But the problem with us is we are so much insecure that we say, I, I better go to Mumbai and think rather than I take a detour, I get down at say Kota Junction, I don't know Kota Junction, maybe will I get a plane or a train or whatever it is, at least this is comfort. So what happens, your comfort zone is the biggest enemy which stops you from doing the karma, taking the actions. Many a times you say, I, you know, I have seen people say, oh, I'm so fed up with my job. I say, okay, why don't you leave the job? Uh, you know, my, I have bills to pay. Mm. What if you lose your job tomorrow? What if pandemic comes in? Then where does the bills go? Which means you are sure that at least this treacherous job is paying my bills, but nothing else will happen, which can maybe not only pay my bills, but give me excess money and satisfaction. That uncertainty, which we are always, you know, troubling us. 
I get so many people say, I want to start a business. I say, why not? Go ahead. No, but I've never done a business. Anyways, everyone does a business for the first time. You are right. not the first person on this earth who's doing business for the first time. You got married also for the first time, you know. We never got, we were never born married. Right. So, you take such big decisions of your life. You get married to a lady whom you don't know. You mar married to a person whom you don't know. And you take that uh, risk. And this is business. You can always, you know, change, go back to job after two years or three years. But we are so much into the comfort zone. So that's where we have a trap. And when we are in a comfort zone, what we do is we watch people who are successful and say, Oh my God, he's so successful. But you forgot that he got down at quota. And what you are now thinking, seeing is he's struggling in quota. He's not getting the, uh, you know, train or whatever it is. And he's struggling and say, oh my God, see, he's struggling. At least I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to. But after five years, you will find him that he's so much successful in Calcutta. You're still struggling in Mumbai. Mm. So could I, could I clarify that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. How dest yeah. destiny is always in our hands. Okay. So the karma was, uh, just to make sure that I've understood it. So the karma was getting into the train to Mumbai and uh, and either not getting off at uh, it at some intermediate and taking the train or uh, flight back to to calcutta or continuing to uh, to mumbai so this is the karma right if i get off that's my karma and i was i was that helped me if that's i don't get off that's a different thing and that's going to have a different so the destiny will be will change because of that right Will the destiny change? Right? Absolutely. See okay. the challenge here. The, the challenge here is the challenge here is not doing any karma is also karma. Yeah, correct. Absolutely. It's it said not not taking a decision. Not taking a decision also is also a decision. A decision. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So so if you are not taking any if you are not taking any decision to debout the train, that also is your karma. Nah? Mm -hmm. You can't blame that. How did I reach Mumbai? I I wanted to go to Calcutta. It, this, this this example might sound very absurd, but in life we do the same. Right. It may sound very absurd. Yeah, why did I reach Mumbai when you know I had to go to Calcutta? Oh God, why are you so you know? And they say, yeah, when you when you knew that this train is going to Mumbai, I gave you five st stations to, you know, get down. You made one mistake, fine, get down. Right. So again, everything boils down to karma. Mm -hmm. Everything. Okay. So that's one. And uh, obviously, de delayed gratification, you won't get immediate, uh, you know, results of your karma because that will collapse the universe, mm. you know, whatever is taken. And soul contract, the, the, the last is the soul contract. For example, uh, in the last birth, you wanted to become a, we, I, I'm saying you, you, it's not because I'm pointing out to you when I say you, it's yeah, the yeah, listener. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll rather say, I'll, I'll rather say we. See, for example, I, if I wanted to become a theater artist mm. and I wanted to become a wonderful theater artist who has got all the emotions, who understands all these emotions, fine. Right. And if I ask you to write a script for me, that how, where will I be born and how will I become a a perfect theater artist who understands all emotions, who's so connected with the audience, uh, whose actions, gestures are so genuine. And if I ask you to write a script, and if the script goes like this, that in the next birth, he, you know, he's born in a rich family, who are who already are successful businessmen, and they are also into produce producing movies and very successful so since birth you you know you traveled in mercedes car you did all the you know all the luxuries you didn't know what suffering was you went to the best schools you enjoyed the best things in the best vacations everything was so cool for you mm. and then suddenly you start thought okay now i want to become a theater artist and my first assignment is i am a beggar and i have to become that beggar which touches the heart of the, you know, the audience. How's the script? The script is good, but I, I don't know Does how, it relate? How, how, how difficult it is going to be to do that <laughs> for me, because I'm not used to that, right? Yeah. But yeah. what if? Yeah. Yeah. But what if mm. then I was, I was born in a very poor family. 
Mm. I had all the troubles in my life. My father was a drunkard. My mother was beaten, and then I ran from my house. Then I went to Mumbai. I didn't know. I suddenly had these, you know, thinking that I would become an art actor, but no one would take me. I I did shoe polishing and all those odd jobs. Then somebody said, "Okay, yeah, you look so good. Why don't you, you know, act in a film?" I said, "Who will give me a film?" And then he gave me a small role. And then I thought, "Okay, this was it." Then I struggled. I went to different, different, you know, uh, casting directors, and they all rejected me. I, I, you know, I uh, uh, absorbed all the rejections inside me, and then I got a role where I had to do a beggar. The role was not very significant, but the way I did it was so awesome that I went. I got the best critic award, you know. and okay. the next moment i was flooded with offers now what how is this script no now i understood now, the point when you asked me how is this script now i i i understand the point obviously the first one was nothing nothing sensational right this is everything was perfect everything was you know on my plate and it it happened whereas the second one was the challenge that was makes the thing so much more interesting and so much more fulfilling i would say right yeah go ahead yes So, so that's so that's soul contract. So when we say karma versus destiny, number one, if I wrap it out, number one, karma is not only the action. Actually, it's not the action; it's the thought process. Thought process. Okay. Thought process behind the action. My thought process behind giving some money to some person or helping some person is: Will I get this back? I have nullified it. So the action which you have seen is: I am helping people. The action which you have not seen is: At the back of my mind, say, God. i am giving him 10 giving him 10 rupees please return me 1000 rupees right which is not there so i won't get the karma so first thing is your thought process is your karma not your actions second is delayed gratification you won't get the results as of today you will get a result so there is a timeline so what you are getting today is past karmas what you will be getting tomorrow is today's karmas past karmas is the destiny it said the past karma is the destiny today's karma is my you know which will create my destiny for the future okay so karma is today karma is today not tomorrow and last of all we all have our soul contracts we have to go through that soul contract the soul contract is nothing but whatever jobs we have left unfulfilled in our and that is why if you see many of the religions they preach to be desire free if you don't see if you don't want to have a rebirth then all the desires should be either nullified or absolved that's it and that's what the moksha says ki if you have zero desires you won't come back here okay you'll go to the next dimension now that's again is a different topic together but hope i could in a layman's language explain that whatever has happened please don't repent on that it happened for a reason when we say it happened for a reason is that same see when if if you are talking here why that person was suffering why that person bo- was born in a poor family why he his father was a drunkard why did all this thing? it happened for a reason because i chose to become a star actor and that was my training for becoming a star actor okay and the other people are just characters helping me mm So whatever happens happens for a reason. Whatever okay. will happen will happen for a reason. I hope I could uh, yes. justify. Maybe I didn't confuse. No, no, no. It's fine. I, I think uh, now things are falling in place. Uh, so Arun, another question to you is: um, Does my destiny determine my karmas, or my karmas determine my destiny? What is it? Both ways. Both ways. both ways see both ways like for example if you have to, yeah both ways but more of karma more of karma okay fine? because karma will always be there karma will always be there fine but more of karmas because why because the destiny which you have you know created today because of karma will drag you to do that like for example in that same uh, incident i died thinking that i wanted to become a successful actor now my this karma created a destiny that you will become a successful actor in your next birth mm-hmm. so now it's it's a chicken and egg story chicken came mm-hmm. first or egg 
my karma decided a destiny and now the destiny is pulling me through all the experiences of having a drunkard father having a mother being beaten up having all those miseries running away these all karmas which i had to go through all these all experiences which i had to go through was defined by again my destiny but that destiny was defined by my karma which said that i wanted to become an actor okay so always the karma will come first it's like a snake it's like a snake see for example there is a snake there is a head and there is a tail mm. the head can decide which which direction to go can the tail decide no which direction to go can it happen that the head moves forward and the tail goes backwards no not can the tail go backwards and pull the head backwards not possible it's all means yeah. the head has to guide right so the karma will guide so the karma will guide so which means if your head moves 6 inches your tail has to move 6 inches now your head moved 6 inches is your karma the tail has to move 6 inches is the destiny so this destiny cannot be avoided okay fine but, but yes what about next what about next if the if the next step again is the head moves 6 inches then the tail has to again move 6 inches but what if the head moves backward 6 inches now the tail has should tail will not move because the tail is always there okay so who's controlling the destiny the destiny is controlled by the head which is the karma but only to that extent where you have the choice so today you have the choice you cannot cover up the yester years mm. i cannot go back and change my parents i cannot go back and change my country or change my but today i can do anything i can change my country i can change my anything i can change my profession i can change any damn thing which i want to do right but if you say why did you become an engineer well that was my destiny because i created a karma because in my previous birth i also wanted to become an engineer right could i could could, could yeah yeah could you relate yeah. to it matlab yeah yeah absolutely my follow up question is that if what i am doing in life what i am achieving in life whatever my life is today is based on the karma that i did earlier in maybe in this birth maybe in the previous birth or maybe five five births away right and and therefore those karmas are determining my destiny so what control do i have to change my destiny we all say that my destiny is in, in my hands but there are karmas which has happened in the past which i am i may not even be aware of i most probably most of them i won't be aware of it so how do i ch- how do i change the destiny is yeah, true true very good question uh, see any destiny can be changed by two things either you absolve it or dissolve it okay either you face it or you dissolve it fine facing it means for example you did something wrong so in the next five years if if we have to suffer if i did something wrong next five years i have to suffer i have two choices number one choice is that i go through all this experience of suffering for the five years and i'll be dissolved the karma will be the second thing is which is called evolution first thing forgiving yourself for everything you know the problem is that vibration is not dying because we haven't forgiven ourselves for example in that case even if that person becomes a very successful theater artist he will always creep that i had a bad father i had a bad mother mm. you know my mother was beaten he will never forget these experiences that's called forgive and forget if you don't forgive and forget the vibrations will keep on accumulating mm-hmm. so first thing is we need to understand and that is why forgiveness is the you know top most uh i'll not say virtue essential people say forgiveness is a virtue no forgiveness is essential we need to forgive because we need to understand they were just characters it's like theater agar ek theater mein if i created a character and you are a character and this that character has to bash you up that doesn't mean that he actually wanted to bash you up. the director said please bash him up so that he becomes strong right so we need to forgive that person who bashed me up because universe said unless until you get that bashing you are not going to become strong you won't get the will power to bounce back so we need to be grateful say thank you so much for coming in my life and you know uh 
training me because when you go to a gym trainer what does he do he bashes you mm. will you find a gym trainer so oh, come sit down sleep i'll give you some food to eat and you will have those six pack abs he said no boss come do first your brisk walks half an hour one hour brisk walks then he'll put a lot of weights on your thing he's actually torturing you and we say no 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 he's training me wow that's training and what's this mm. what's this what's exactly. universe doing that's right you know is also trained yeah and the last yeah. is if you really want to dis- if you really want to dissolve our karmas start meditation okay meditation is the easiest and quickest way to dissolve all karmas because meditation is actually when people say meditation they say oh hame dhyan karke baithna hai aankh karke baithna hai no meditation is aapke jitne bhi vibration whatever vibrations are vibrating in you nullify that that's mm-hmm. called dissolve okay so by meditation you can dissolve all your fa- past karmas in a jiffy Fantastic. all you have to do is meditate meditate but at the same time don't start getting new karmas it's like this you go for a bath come out and then go into the dirt then it's not going to happen people say i meditate karta hu nothing happens i say you meditate you take bath and then you go to the dirt mm. right you have to maintain your cleanliness also Mm-hmm. that that way you can dissolve any karma which you have any karma in your life perfect vibrations great yeah um viewers wasn't that an amazing session and the the analogies that uh, arun shared with us i i think uh, this all my confusion is now clear and i i hope it's clear and if it's not watch this episode once again i'm sure all your the doubts that were there would um, you know, would be resolved and i'm sure this particular uh, conversation would have created a lot of thoughts in your in your mind and if 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 you have any specific you know, questions or if you want something more some some similar topics that you want us to cover please uh, post your comment in fact uh, arun what i wanted to do is uh, obviously we have run out of time now uh, what i want to do is uh, in my in our next session Uh, this the other thing which has been bothering me is this astrology now the astrology is a science of uh, creating your horoscope based on the uh, planetary positions at the time of birth and then then we say okay as per astrology this is what is your life etc what is the connection between astrology karma and destiny i think this will be a uh, good topic for our next episode guys if um, if this would be of interest just make sure that you like share and subscribe to this channel and when that episode comes out you will get uh, the notification and and again if any other topics that you want us to cover that we are going to have a series of topics on these these uh, subjects and this if this is of interest to you please do update and share what you want us to cover okay thank you very much arun it was a wonderful session you know, my thank i am now clear what is this thank you, thank you so much. and i will definitely watch this again thank you very much it was a pleasure having you guys thank you so much thank you very much for watching all the very best and uh, see you in in the next bye bye thanks